fucking Christ. This song is so fucking ADD. I love it. It's pure Eurobeat trash, but I... Mm, it just hits that right spot. Like Caramel Dancing or some other weird weeb shit. It's perfect. And I don't know why. I were like an I grab. I just found that last night and now I'm getting like nothing but initial D recommendations. Oh, back in the 90s. And ooh, all this other fancy shit's been made into a meme a million times. It doesn't even seem like that's even like a recent thing, too. I think everyone's just like trolling the shit out of each other. Yeah, I get the hell out of that music ads. By the way, welcome everybody. Sonic phone not streaming yesterday, but now we are on today. I was just currently grinding a little bit and doing a little bit of things, but now we're back. There we go, keep that on. And I did say, once we did finish that seasonal thing, which I did do on my own, and did successfully sell it, so now we're up to about 1,400 coins. So now we have about $400 to spare on whatever we want, so... Considering we're about to get our third, uh, I would say, daily quest done, that will give us a grand total of about $600, which if you go to this, that is exactly enough to make two of these crates. So we can just buy about 3,000 scrap on the market. Not too expensive, but we're currently going to need to do a couple more missions there. Nothing extreme. Yeah, let's put it over there. I actually be trying out this build. Instead of actually going for the these shitty nice cheap machine guns, they're pretty effective at most ranges. I just found that using two of them below deck did not terribly work out or did not work out very well. They don't have to get rammed off, shot off, or something stupid like that, so we instead just replaced them with the defender guns, which should work out like seven times better. For some reason people still don't shoot the ones on top very much accurately, something like that. I just kind of ignore them, which is strange because that's like half my damage. So you can just quickly shoot that shit off. Oh, I was wondering who the fuck had the balls to come with me in this shitty ass car like that. I love you, Christopher. Never change, mate. Give me it. Yes, it is the four like a crap. And ooh, wet night. I gotta show you the convoy that we finished building. That's like what it did the majority of the day was just work on that, but I figured out that really what it needed to do is that it also needed to adjust vehicle weights. That was the main thing that was fucking over a lot of my build. My vehicle was as light as it could be. There was nothing else I could change on that. So I thought, how about I make the convoy carrier lighter? So it took like two, three, four tons off that thing and made it ultra light. I mean, at least for the size it is, I mean, it's still like 13, 14 tons. Just still a lot of fucking weight that's like, you know, 13 cars. But now I have plenty of extra weight to actually move, so I'll show that soon. It actually works really well. Ah, oh, we should, okay. Let's get out of here for a hot second, let me turn this down. Perfect, okay. So, here we go. Here is the convoy carrier. It still has the main convoy carrying parts. The ramp is unaffected. Although, ooh, it would be very, very difficult to actually keep the convoy stable on this thing. Considering there is no way to actually, like, stabilize it. But here is the thing that actually can carry it. So if we load this thing on here, and then get the convoy carrier out, oh wait, we have to take off the machine guns, but here, wait, let's see, we can do that for you. Load this thing up, take these guns off, save this shit, as that. Alright, now I can show you it. So as you can see, we modified the ramp a little bit. It's a little bit thinner at the top. What I found out is that the original vehicle was strangely a little bit wider. It was just phenomenally huge and I don't know why. So this design uh, is a little bit more specialized to this thing, but I think it ends up working out quite well. 
So if we turn our ass around and just back up nice and slowly. And you know what? Let's go ahead and adjust over. This is very particular because it's basically threading a needle because we're trying to get this thing jammed in as tightly as possible. So squeeze our ass in there. Oh no, it's about to tip over again. There we go. As you can see, running into a little bit of an issue, as you can see, the tire is a little bit wedged there. So if we squeeze ourselves out a little bit, there we go. It's resting on our tracks again. And we can just put that right the fuck in there. See, now the vehicle itself is firmly wedged within our ass. Although it really depends on where your vehicle is currently. Because for some reason, it doesn't mind hills very well, but soon yeah so look at this it's very finicky for some reason it can go at nearly full speed at other points in time it's like i can hardly move and i don't know what causes it I found it wasteland i got a one token fucking container lovely and i don't understand this seems to be an issue with like collision i'm thinking causing unnecessary uh force constraints something like that because other points of time, if I'm able to get this thing perfectly wedged in, it works so fucking well. And then I could actually haul this thing around on my back. So flip this shit around. There we go. This is what I was doing all day, so most of it was just bug testing. Not terribly interesting. And what I love too is that it constantly harms our vehicle as well as if it's actually doing something. Come on, get in there, you fat piece of shit. Come on, this truck bed. I made this specifically towards your vehicle design. There we go. Wedge it in. Just keep walking up there, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, almost in. There we go. And as soon as it gets in there, it causes our vehicle to slow down an asinine amount. Okay, yeah, see, look at this. For some reason, we can haul the vehicle perfectly fine at any other point in time, but as soon as it gets here, it's like, I don't want to fucking do anything anymore. It's so strangely finicky. And I don't understand. The convoy thing itself is a lot easier to actually get in. This seems like fuck you. Here we go. Let's try this one more time before I'm giving up. I know I can do this. I've done it multiple times. I've taken pictures, posted it on the forum section. Be like, yo, fucking carry a convoy carrier. Get on my level. This is like next level tactics here. I should probably be a little bit more patient. I'm being totally ADD right now, and I don't know why. It's not like I gotta do anything important. This is purely for science. The thing is, we don't even know if this thing can actually handle the extra 10 to 15 tons the convoy itself weighs. So, I mean, to realistically, to have me haul this and the convoy, me and this truck would have to be less than 10,000 kilograms. Which is extremely light for a f huge flatbed truck. Yes, I do remember you, Blitz. It could work with another pair of legs. And, of course, this thing snaps. <laughs> Things very brittle in the middle, unless you couldn't tell. About 100 damage into the middle and everything falls off on it. Need three le mech legs. Someone sell them. Hell no. I need these things. Apparently no one's producing uh, parts anymore. Probably because it's so expensive. I mean, scrap itself is nearly like 30, or 30 coins just for the scrap alone. Not even to mention copper, the bench, the parts. All that shit. Here we go. Last attempt. There we go, just slide. Yeah, I don't understand why it keeps drifting to the left. Yeah, 
here. Let's go ahead and just wedge that on there. It's extremely long. I'll give you that. See, look at this. We can haul the entire weight of this car without an issue, but as soon as it passes that ramp, it will cease to move. The physics in this game are very wonky, and I don't know why. Uh, see, look at that. As soon as it falls into place, I can't move. Ah, there we go. Perfect. I got it. Let's look at that. I'm actually able to carry this whole fucking thing. As you can see, it's a little bit glitchy with the physics. It's currently bouncing off that frame a bit in front, but that basically allows it to get wedged off that generator right there and keeps it in place. And the extra side frames on the side keep it nice and closely pinned into the sides. So we can effectively carry this thing. But can't handle the convoy? I don't know. The other guy doesn't want to fucking try it. He's like, nah, man, I don't feel like doing this. Even though this is the bomb.com. I mean, look how cool this shit is. You should see the other uh, convoy carrier had a design. That thing was like a 20 or 30 extra parts longer than this thing. I think it was huge. But it looks like we're going to have to actually load this and actually edit this a tad bit. Because what we're going to actually have to do is we're going to add some convoy rails. Because currently what is happening is that the convoy is basically going to be loaded onto these canvas roofs. The issue is there is nothing barring it from going to one side or the other. So we're going to add some weight. And I'm sorry, not add weight but add some type of protective railing. So the biggest thing we can do is just add very long pieces of wood or bumper cars. So right now, we're just gonna add some of these. I'm gonna add these to right about here. These are very heavy, so I'm not particularly keen on using them. What do we need, just these, or do we need the four square? No, it's this thing. No, it's the whole four thing. Okay. So then why isn't this sticking in there? The fuck is going on here? Alright, whatever wants to do that thing. Okay. So. Why do you use the spider legs all the time instead of wheels? I just like the spider legs. They're so much more interesting, I think, for movement patterns than wheels. Although I do miss wheels and tracks. Those things are just a hell of a lot faster and more convenient to use. They're kind of even more fun in that regard. While spider legs are interesting to use, there's just so many drawbacks to using them. Oh, yeah, you want to go fast? Sure, by all means. But uh, you ain't going to go shit for him anyway, son. There we go. So what I'm thinking about doing is essentially adding a long ass rail to this thing. So we got this huge ass uh, line there. Flip this thing around, add it to this side. Yeah, look at that. We only added on three extra parts. Hmm, really, really didn't add a whole bunch of railing to this thing. Like I guess so you want to prevent this thing from falling off to the sides. That's a really big issue. So what part could we add in here that could really prevent the slope from falling over? We got some ultralight parts here that we could probably flip out for something a tad bit less effective. Yeah, okay, so we got an extra part. And look at that, we see we added an extra couple thousand tons on already. 
It also seems like we could also reduce this cabin size and pull it back more. But we'll see. The convoy truck does have a large head onto it. So this will prevent basically the back end from falling out. Which is kind of useful. Hmm. It's looking like it might work fairly well as is. It's about as long as we're going to be able to get it. And those parts are about as short or long as we can keep them. Damn, okay. Boys, look at this shit that we could, like, reduce down in size. Hmm. And see, we added a bunch of grills so that I could actually go up top a little bit longer. Eee, that's all perfect. And we get those wings down here, that'd be nice. Excellent day. Like if we can get those right here. And then bring that down here as well. There we go, that's see that's a tad bit a little bit more helpful. And this guy likes his thing to be an all lightning color. See, now that would be pretty damn safe, if I would say so myself. Although I guess we could do it up about right here. Flip that on that side. And then there we go. It's about the same size now, okay. This is a little bit longer, a little bit more forward. And it's definitely getting up to the meat of the truck. So this thing shouldn't tip over nearly as much. Okay, okay, I think that works, that's perfect. Although we did kind of have to sacrifice the positioning of this thing, unfortunately. Just so that we can get it to articulate a little bit better. We do have a nice amount of firepower here. So that we can. F I mean, for the most part, these guns can fire at pretty much any direction pretty damn well. So I think that's pretty dang good. So we got the convoy carrier with the nice long arm rails. Let's see if that is compatible with this design. The long arms should not really be an issue considering they're farther in the back and they shouldn't hit our caucus uh, standoffs. They might hit the van doors though, which is going to be the big issue. And those van doors are kind of crucial for keeping the thing from falling out. At least when we were initially dogging this thing. The wide end is where it tends to fall out. Not when we get it officially fully fledged in though. It's very finicky like that. This probably also has different physics for allies, so I'm not sure how this would work on the actual test scenario. Oh, okay. Uh, let's take a look here. And move over a little bit to this side. I'm currently stuck on an invisible wall. All right. Move this way. Move back. There we go. Perfect. Nice and firmly lodged in there to the point where gravity does no longer make sense. Now give us a second. We have to figure out which way physics will allow us to actually move. Alright, so it's looking like physics does not want us to move that way. What if we want to move this way, physics? <laughs> yeah.
it's so strange why it does that. I don't know why. Hmm. All right, so we got this saved. Let's keep that nice and saved. Let's load this baby back up. So what I'm thinking what we can do is that we can plant the van doors right here like that. So that would be on the second one, two out, okay. So that's nice and firmly sticking out. Get this thing nice and loaded up. Test it again. So now that that thing is nice and like guiding it, the wheel shouldn't fidget nearly as much. Assuming the van doors don't, will die. Because this is currently technically an enemy vehicle for testing purposes, so I unfortunately cannot test allied cars very much. These testing designs are a tad bit limited. It would really be nice if they actually had a little bit more robust of a testing system before we actually had to, like, go out into the real world. It's just like last time we were playing Mountain Blade, just me. Oh, don't worry. YouTube chat always tends to be quiet, especially at this time of night. Okay, so here we go. Slide that back in. It looks like the back wheels are being a little bit finicky here. And okay. It doesn't like that. Okay. Perfect, there we go. Yeah, see, look at that, then physics stops working again. Even though we loaded it in practically perfectly. Yeah, this is so finicky, it's hilarious. There we go, the wheels are nice and launched in place now. I'm just saying, post more in the day, okay. Go here, YouTube chat. Panda needs a load time. Fucking Christ, yeah, let's, let's just make everything nice and derelict again. See, then look at this. Then it just starts fucking doing a mamba jamba. Look at that shit. There we go. See, now this thing is nice and fast. Of course, the vehicle is unfortunately colliding a little bit too much. It is not like the physics of this whole thing. More people are awake. True. There's also the added benefit of possibly Europeans. People in California also live three hours behind me, so... Uh, right now, it's not even late for them, really. Here we go. See, look at that shit. That is the bomb.com. Look at that shit. See, all we need to do now is have that thing load with a convoy onto me, get the wheels nice and launched in place, and I could carry this shit. This is a, a really steep hill, but I know there's a hill around here that we can for certain climb. Looks like the wheels became dislodged again. Yeah, those wheels are uber finicky. So let's go ahead and turn this thing. Come on. Come on. You got this shit. Come on. I believe in you. The spider mech does not like this. Here, does that help? There we go. Hey, this thing's going to be super finicky to drive. If I made this a wheeled flatbed truck, this probably would be a little bit better designed, to be honest. Because for me, it's like 11 p.m. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, see, now it moves really fast. God damn, why does it keep doing this? Maybe, you know what I need to do? Maybe I need to make the part where the wheels are flat. Like, the back part where you see those two double tires uh, in between a gap, we could make that uh, and flush that out with some uh, length part. And that prevent the wheel from falling through. So hopefully that would actually make it so we wouldn't get the full weight bearing or would that actually give us more weight bearing that'll be the kind of interesting question here
We'll have to power like our legs. True, and on top of that, we'd also have to use a lot of wheels. But at the same time, wheels also offer a lot more speed than the average leg, so we might actually even have more wiggle room. It just really depends. We wouldn't have to use nearly as much frames. Yeah, see, as you can see, it's quite mobile, even in its current state. Oop, must have hit a snatch there. Yep, and it looks like the tires are now activating full physics on me now. Can we walk sideways by any chance? Nope, can we walk that way? Yes, we can. It seems that I have to approach a hill at practically 90 degrees if I want to get over it. This thing does not like hills whatsoever. Even though this thing does have nearly max hauling capacity and back to max speed. Why are you like this? Come on, just keep moving. You have the power of all six legs behind you. Oh, beautiful. Keep moving, keep moving. There we go. Beautiful little design there. The reason why I have to look at it sideways is that currently this truck is sitting on top of my camera. So I have to swing my camera out to the side. Otherwise, it'll do this. I guess it could be like right here. It's like a weird little silver spot. Yeah, let's get over here. Yeah, the issue is, is that most of these maps do have hills. So you at least want to be able to climb a hill like this. If you can climb a hill like this, then you're pretty much guaranteed to be okay. As you can see, I am clearly not ready for that. I'm a little bit too heavy. It's just currently exceeding my max weight limit. Just a little bit too heavy. And it's not going to have the car on top help me out, too. Yeah, so that now we're currently stuck right here for no reason. We should be moving at full speed. All legs are on the ground. Except physics do not work. Except now they do work. Interesting. Oh, well, I hit a tree there. Okay. So, what I'm thinking... Tank treads? We could try that. The thing is that those are expensive as well. But they do offer a decent tonnage. So, what could we fit here to kind of flush that whole thing out? How many wings do we have? Let's scooch that thing out. So we got about six parts to fill this thing up. Or sorry, three parts. So what would be good? This would be quite nice, actually. You have that nice and wedged in there. Let's see if this works. Because now that should allow for some little bit of motivation. Okay, you. Let's load you back up. Now let's test you. Now that we have that little bar there preventing the wheels from falling through, either this will mean that we can have uh, full speed or no speed at all. Physics, I love them. I don't understand this. I could probably ask one of the moderators on this, like, why does uh, hauling my ally on a truck bed work sometimes, but then I can't move it all at other points of time? Has it do something with weight distribution or some shit? Here we go. Let's flip this on top. See, 
seems those back wheels are causing an issue. Ooh, got on there. Perfect. Hmm. It seems the last wheels. Is this your favorite game? It's a game I like playing. I will give you that. I think actually the less it touches my car, the better. So, if we get rid of this, and the middle wheels already don't touch anything, and make that don't touch anything either, we should actually be able to get something close to what we desire. And like, we'll just have that right there as like a little guide to keep the car nice in place. Ah, oh, fuck my nose. So get this stuck right there. And you go right there. And I think that should be good enough. So now basically all the tires will basically fall right through the cracks and potentially reduce the weight on my overall car by a shitload. We'll see how that turns out. So we load this back up and then we test drive this. Cause it seems that the less tires that touch me, the less weight that's actually bared down on my car. So if we can reduce all the tires being touched to zero, then we could effectively have practically no weight on us. That seems to be the key here. And I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense because we're still holding the entire fucking 20 tons of this thing. Need a half track carry. We could do something like that. Might be a little bit expensive considering scrap is currently astronomically high. So getting like a couple hundred thousand scrap for that would be a tad bit of a difficult task. It seems to be working. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it does work. Like, what the fuck? Okay, okay, so... I think we... Close to finishing this thing. So we just need to make that a little bit smaller. If we make it... About... Yay big. Now she has the added benefit of also making our vehicle quite a bit lighter. Tank treads would be nice. The issue is, is that... Uh, their weight max is almost equivalent to their tonnage, so they effectively give close to zero extra value to actually hauling. And it's been pointed out by a lot of people on the forums. Here, if we keep it like that, that seems like it should be pretty damn good. Let's go ahead and paint these black. Paint you black. To match the overall aesthetics. All right, let's see if this works. So we got the PD carrier here. What is this? This is currently called Crossout. Looks huge. Well, this is a two-part design. This is a flatbed truck, and this is a truck that carries a convoy. So this carries this, which this carries a convoy. So effectively, this thing will be holding up two cars while holding up itself. It's quite a erratic design. But we'll see if it works. So we load this thing in. And if we can get the tires to all slide into their holes, they should work. We'll see. We'll see if this actually makes our vehicle a lot faster. If we have none of the tires touching us, Apparently that makes us very, very quick. As soon as the tires touch us, 
physics starts getting funky. I know what it is. All right. I was just making sure. I'm not sure if a convoy carrier carrier is a common thing, so... <laughs> kind of requires a lot of explanation to make sense. Here, let's go ahead and test this. Go in, go in, slide right in. Alright, move over. And then plop right down into your holes. Ah, shit. There we go, perfect. Oh yeah, that's fucking sweet. So now the tires shouldn't pop out. Oh yeah, look at that. Bring it to PvP. Well, I mean, this design right now is currently not very good for PvP, I imagine. Yeah, that's why you kind of have to like work around it. And this is kind of the design that I finally came up with. As you can see, currently none of the tires, except for that back and medium one, is hitting at the truck. So it doesn't really cause a whole lot of weight bearing on my vehicle. Allowing me to move pretty damn quickly, considering I'm hauling about 28, 20 to 30 tons right now, when my max weight limit is 25. But if you're a high enough level, you can execute this. Well, I mean, I'm level 30. I'm actually prestige 1. So I hope I'm high enough level for this thing. That's six spider legs for a reason. Oh, yeah, look at this thing. So I think we just need to uh, make this a little bit more fresh. So, uh, currently, the medium wheels are resting at about here. So if we scooch these over a little bit... And we can add some van doors here to kind of like coax those medium wheels in. There we go. It should be enough space. Hey, thank you for stopping by, Blitz. Hope to see you next time, man. So like I was saying, we're going to need something else. Maybe like this. Oh, wait, no, they're going to run out of parts for our caucuses okay oh yeah this thing's nearly 20,000 pounds god damn we don't even have our thing loaded in yet nice oh yeah in pvp totally this is not meant for pvp at all i mean if i put this thing in pvp at best it'll just confuse people because they're like where the fuck do i attack this thing's huge! I have managed to kill a few people, but the thing is also, using four caucuses, very ineffective. Extremely ineffective. Shotgun rammers can't really do much to this thing, though. Because they have a lot to shoot. A lot to shoot. Even though my cabin doesn't have that much power on it. Oh, look at that, we don't even have a bumper on this thing yet. Whoops! Oversight with some builds. I don't think the medium tires need that extra bit of... Help. So we'll just go ahead and here we go. Let's go ahead and put that there. Get the caucuses on. And these, since we're such a large vehicle, we kind of need an all-encompassing weapon, one that can you basically articulate on its own. This is practically the only one that can do it. Get a nice little weapon up front. There we go. So this should work just as is. Perfectly fine. Why don't you make a shotgun Ozzer buzzsaw melee part build? Did I miss the unboxing, Jonathan Schmidt? No, you did not. I am currently fixing up a design that I'm going to go do some battles, and then we can start doing those boxes. So an Ozzer buzzsaw melee part build... Uh, middle of making a prototype. But need more parts to do the full build. Eh. I never was a big fan of those type of ramming builds, although I do like using shotguns occasionally. But I think right now what we got here is pretty damn good. This should actually work out quite nicely.
All right, sorry about that. Got distracted. But now we're back. <laughs> I'm a terrible striver. But I should inform you that there are points in times where I will get IRL DDoS type of deal. But I think, yeah, this is practically as good as we can get it, so... Let's go ahead and save these two parts. And then let's go ahead and delete these off the exhibition and replace them with the brand new updated versions. So this one... You guys can now find these on the exhibition if you guys want to use them for yourselves. They'll be a little bit expensive to make, but they'll be the creme de la crop. So now let's actually go finish this one mission we got here. We got to do four more battles. That's it. We don't even have to actually win them. Just like two minute battles. Shit. It's like half my team's leaving too. That's the one bad thing I hate about that. It's like you can start the game. And yet nobody's fully loaded in for like another minute. So like a whole front can really just be dictated whether or not who has the fastest internet. Oh god, it looks like at least we got the point. But damn are these people getting absolutely shredded in the middle. And they left the point, great job. Perfect, another machine gun build. Why would you- whoa, 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 Do he seriously have his oil tank in front of his car? He's asking to get one-shotted. Bring out the carrier carrier. That is the carrier carrier, it's just to rename something different. I mean, the name literally stands for Convoy Carrier Carrier. It's just uh, using an acronym because I couldn't fit that whole thing into one line. It's still a ridiculous name. I refuse to lose this. We are doing so fucking well. Oh, come on. All I hate having to do this constant fucking stratified firing mechanism type of deal. I'm glad he's running away too much to actually make his guns useful. Go fuck where did everyone else come from. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and there goes the auger killing everything else I got. Nothing but drones, my god. It's fucking killer. I hate that in lower power score, that's still a common thing. Although, to be fair, this is still like the 5,000 range. The actual guy who made that first initial build, the JD Splicer guy, whatever his fucking name was, I told him about it. He did not seem interested at all. But I was kind of telling him at a point in time when he was just like, Oh, well, let me be... Say three words. Hey, what's up, Jonathan? Welcome. Thank you for actually showing up on Twitch. For those who don't know, I'm currently streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and Mixer. So feel free to follow on any of your platforms. But Twitch does have a loyalty system. And alerts do show up on screen. And on top of that, if we actually manage to get all of you onto Twitch... Not sure if this is anything reasonable or out of my realm to ask for, but the Twitch affiliate program only needs three average average viewers. That shit is the creme de la crop for me. Not sure if I'd use it, but it's just like getting a free pat on the back. God, it sounds so self-absorbed. It's not the worst thing. At least when I'm Jake Pauler. Just doing reaction videos and outdated memes. While being a 20 year old guy living in a $5 million house. I think it could at least be more wholesome than that. Get the fuck out of here. I can't turn my invisibility off. You mean like... On... Twitch where it says like you're offline or invisible type of deal. Yeah, I think if you just click on the invisibility, it should allow you to click it online, but I think if you just um, refresh the page eventually it should work. That's streaming you on an adult website. Jeez, well I'm sorry. Live Jasmine is just kind of a giveaway to be honest. To even mention it would be a fuss. 
Yes. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but alright, yes, we'll go with that. Yes. Yes, indeed, beast. Hopefully, that convoy carry thing actually works out. The thing is, is that we haven't actually tried it yet with a fully loaded uh, convoy truck. So we don't even know if the car itself can actually handle such a huge amount of mass. Hey, thanks, I'm invisible. Hey, that'll work. Hey, at least my bot's able to recognize you, so... Uh, as long as you show up in the viewer chat, you should uh, get your points for that. Yeah, you still got your 11 points, which is actually still pretty good. Still doesn't beat Wet Nights, he has over 900 points, for fuck's sake. You have so many points. It is asinine. Like, at this point, you have to be... Yeah, you were in the lead by over s close to 600 points by now. I mean, the other guy that's below you is BP, and he's never here. <laughs> he was here for like a hot second, but ever since I stopped shooting cross that, he's just like, oh man, I don't know who you are. Oh fuck, it's a hurricane guy, and instantly blew up. Fuck. He must need to keep his generator covered at all. Yeah, man. Yeah, all the bots. Although, I might switch over to, like, a... Ch there seems to be a lot of options nowadays for, like, Twitch streamers to actively use a lot of their um, uh, monetization programs. I know Twitch Lord seems to be the one that's on top of it all the time. I, like, got a lot of things involving bits nowadays. Ooh, shit, someone actually's got the crossbows. Hey, yeah, let me crawl over you. Yeah, just go ahead and don't destroy my machine guns. Let me just sit there and peck at you till you die. Are you gonna, like, fire at me at any point in time? You need to even have a purple radiator for that to even be useful. And I got his wheels off. I'll beat you, Panda. Oh yeah, man, you only need another 400 points to beat me. It's a reasonable little score. I think it's also just like really sketchy because Twitch does not keep an accurate uh, number of how many people are actually here. <laughs> I love doing that, just shooting all of their oil barrel and just watching it explode into huge fury of fireballs. Ooh, that guy must be an extremely old beta tester. I think that profile means you're in an alpha. I believe in you, man. Just continue watching. I so believe in you. I mean, if you want to expedite that process, I think there's another way. Nah. All we gotta do now is focus on this little shit. Ooh. Fucking Christ, are you kidding me? We lose to that. Oh, there's only one person alive and our entire team's alive, but they partially captured a base. That doesn't make any sense. I hate that. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Like, in no way in hell should we be losing that. They didn't capture our base. I'm not doing it to you, pleb. I wasn't implying that at all. I was just saying... You should watch more intently. <laughs> Maybe that might do something. I don't know. Maybe it could even activate gambling. Do you have an auto cannon by any chance? I do have an auto cannon. I think I even actually have two from a build, and I made one from the Nomads. But. Those autocannons are not terribly uh, good for DPS. I mean, they're good for long range, but a lot of maps do not actually benefit from so much long range. I mean, this type of map might work out a little bit, but even then, that's still, like, extremely debatable. Okay, let me just help you out. Yeah. 
let me just take this gun right off your hands. Like this guy is just like ramming as much as humanly possible. Obnoxious as shit. And I see there you go, nothing's going. Oh, he's got the nice fury cabin too. I love that shit. Oh wait, so my PP anyway. Yeah, kind of. It's only for those criminal crop who get lucky enough. And it's just the guys with the shitty tier cannons too. I might be able to take that off just in time before he kills me. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, just stay nice in there. The thing is, you actually have to continue firing at him to actually get the kill. He just did not care at all. Ooh, go ahead, stay right there. Like, expose your gas generator to me. Just gonna... Rude, ramming Jamie in the bush. Look at that. Even ended in a great bit of explosion. Then it'd be bought helping out or bought out. What a bro. <laughs> uh, wait, how many points do we need to get small prizes? Well, that just depends on how small or big the prize is. On the top of that, I really have nothing to give away at the moment, so... Don't have to worry about that at all. I mean, if Crossout ever contacted me about, like, giving away keys or packs, maybe I could eventually do that. But that would be a long time away, considering they only do people who are, like, fairly decently well-known. Especially for a game that's this small of a community size. They actually get it. But they actually do reward their communities pretty well, to be honest. Alright, so I think that actually means... That we got all 600, so this means that we can now actually purchase the other 3,000 scrap we need. I'll go ahead and do this for you guys, I promise I'll do this, so here we go. I want to beat your PP point out. <laughs> hey, if that's what you want to do, I got no grudge against you, mate. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. They give us the steel cavalry containers. Oh, beautiful. And now we have two of these containers. I could sell these things and earn an absolute ass load of money. Look at that shit. $300. If it wasn't for the $34 I had to pay in tax. I think you need more copper. I've been doing a lot of convoys, so that's the issue. The thing about convoys is that they're so fucking lucrative. I stay up until like 5 in the morning doing them if they get on this time. I mean, look at this stuff. This stuff currently costs about $11 for two things. So it gives you about two raids, two convoys, you approximately get about 17 orders of copper, which is about $17. So you get $17 for every $11 you spend doing convoys. That is a six cent um, profit margin every dime, and that is extremely high. That doesn't even account for the fact, yeah, it'd be about a seven coin profit, actually. But should we actually... Open the containers. You know, I think actually, it's actually quite late for me to be honest. I think, in all honesty, I might have to go to bed and you know stuff like that. So I think we'll have to end it off here. I know you guys are all hoping, but we'll have to wait till tomorrow morning at you know 5 a.m. But until then, guys. At the end of the day. I'm just fucking with you guys. Let's open it. Oh, 
I'm gonna blue ball you like that. We're gonna fucking open these things right now. I wanna open them. And that's why for that we can always sell this later on. Oh, actually, tell me. Ooh, good. We can actually earn a profit with this shit. Yeah, see, look at that. I can still earn all of my gold back, too. And that's how that doesn't even account for the fact what we can earn in here. Alright, let's see. What do we get? <laughs> Ooh, I look like they told me to go to copper. <sighs> this. The tsunami gun. $30,000. Crossbow. $2,000. Wheels. About $50. Accessories. About $100. So there's a high chance that we get shit. But there's a high chance we can strike rich. Come on, bo oh yeah, there's also the paint in there. We don't really want to worry about the paint. The paint's worth like nothing. Ah, fuck, the bludgeon. Only worth 23 fucking cents. Oh, that's a crime fucking shame. Do Stellaris? We'll see. Come on, man. Fucking two bludgeons. practically got nothing out of that fucking thing. I got two little ball chains I can dangle from my nuts. Just blue balling the shit out of me. But now look, I got some of their swinging testicles. It's kind of ironic, so I feel like I've been kicked in the balls, and now they gave me two balls. Gave me back in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. That hurts me, to be honest. That's like a physical, just ass blasting. And the thing is, too, the bludgeon is worth less than the actual blue parts that I have in my inventory. Look, these things are worth 30 apiece, these things are worth 23 apiece. Oh my god. Damn. It just wants to ruin me. My mental health goes shite. Eh. What do you want from me, a game? Oh my god. Maybe we could try to reimburse ourselves. Give ourselves some glorious fenders. Can we actually do this? That, uh, god damn it. I always feel like you get shafted by crates. It's like CSGO. You have the urge to gamble, but you just can never fucking get a release. And they always blue ball the shit out of you every time. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, give you a little bit of a, a tickling. A little, a little scratch here. And then, boom, they just don't let you release. They just want to keep you on the edge of your fucking seat for the rest of your life. And they know they can get you to stay there. They know, hey, the pussies. You can't handle not having your crates. You know you must have them. You must find that one legendary knife. But in this game, it's like trying to find a weapon. Something that God can actually use. I mean, seriously, I got one wheel that can't even turn. And I got two fucking accessories <clears throat> for nearly $400 worth of supplies. Probably even $600 worth of supplies. Just the amount of blue balling alone is asinine. Fuck. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait until the end of this event and then buy up all the crates. 
Because at that point in time, they will be their absolute cheapest. You know, let's give ourselves some silver balls. Or actually, you know what? Blue balls. That makes more sense, because that's what I feel like right now. Just right in my face. Rub it the fuck in. <clears throat> God damn. And it was just teasing me, too. Yeah, we'll go ahead and save this. Why not? God damn it. I thought it was going to actually be something good this evening. God damn it. At least tomorrow. Ooh, that'll be nice. So tomorrow, what we can do is that the scrap cap will be resetted. So what that means is that we'll actually be able to farm all of this tomorrow on some events or something like that. Hell, we could probably even farm some of the wires, to be honest. Get a shitload of that, too. Like the smallest vehicle you can. Oh, that's really easy to do. You just get the growl cabin, add two tracks onto it, and that is practically as small as you can get. Like, two small tracks. The thing is super itsy-bitsy, and it just kind of, like, flops about. It looks so ridiculous. It's asinine looking, but it's glorious. I think it was even in here at some point, but fuck it. I mean, those crates things just killed me, my god. All of my money drained into that. And he's just like, you know, we'll not reward you. You know, hey, you're not deserving. But fuck it. You know, we'll wait until tomorrow, until the scrap cap is lifted, so that we can actually start earning more of those parts, and then I can buy about, you know... $30 worth of Telvar stones, or not Telvar stones, taller stones, and we can open up another crate. So, we'll see if we can do that tomorrow. Try to see if we can get eventually one good weapon. It's just one good drop, and we can make all of our money back instantly. But at the same time, that is so hilariously unlikely. I mean, considering how little crates there are, but strangely enough, the market inflation's ass high. But... That's for another time, so I want to thank you all for joining me. Sorry for this little bit of a short stream, but managed to actually do quite a bit, so... Uh, down below, there's a bunch of links to various social media platforms, that's any of your choosing. And make sure to follow on Twitch. Other than that, there's Discord down below if you want to join a community. And... I'll see you next time, guys. And make sure I will be, hopefully, I will be on tomorrow morning, assuming I wake up to my alarm. So if I wake up to my alarms... I will get on in the morning and stream a little bit of the PvP mode. So, we'll try it until then, guys. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.